Hey everyone, we're going to pick back up on our study. Since it's been a couple of days, I'm going to recap just a little bit. Uh, we know that we were seeing Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and November 28th coming up a lot in uh, word people were getting. So I prayed and asked the Lord about uh, asking him if there was a significance with Thanksgiving. And when I opened the scriptures, and you know, I just closed my eyes and opened them. He had had me open up to Nehemiah chapter 12, which happens to be a chapter that gives reference to thanksgiving or giving thanks seven different times within the chapter. And the first verse that the Lord led me to was implying uh, a dedication uh, and thanksgiving taking place at the dedication. So that was, we were seeing implications of Hanukkah and Thanksgiving there within one verse because we know that Hanukkah means dedication. Okay, from there, we saw that um, the main thing the Lord pointed out to me in this chapter was it was the Levites that uh, were played a big part in this dedication and the thanksgiving that took place. So the Lord's got me looking into things about the Levites and how they are a picture of the bride. So that's where we are right now. <clears throat> and we had looked at Numbers 8, Numbers chapter 8, picking up here in verse 6 and 7, we see about the cleansing of the Levites. In verse 11, we see that in the latter part of the verse, it says that they may execute the service of the Lord. Okay. It says, and Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering of the children of Israel, that they may execute the service of the Lord. So that, that tells us what their purpose is going to be to execute the service of the Lord. All right. And then here in verse 14, we see thus Shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. All right, this is the Lord speaking here. And he's clearly saying he wants the Levites separated, set aside, separately. Um, they will be his. And up here we see they are going to execute his the service of the Lord. So we can say that they are playing an important part. It says, thus saith Oh, I read that already. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Um, and we move on. We see um, here in verse 16, it says, For they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel, instead of, of such as open, instead of such as open every womb, even instead of, of the firstborn of the children of Israel, have I made them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, but both man and beast on the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt. Now see, here we have our connection back to um, where the Lord originally took me studying about the three days of darkness in Exodus chapter 10. And, and we see where the sacrificial blood was put on the doorpost and then... The firstborn in all homes throughout the land that did not have the sacrificial blood on the uh, doorpost, the firstborn uh, died. And here we see a connection back to that with the Levites here. Because at that time, um, the Lord had basically set claim to the firstborn of the children of Israel when he spared them during that time. But here the Lord is saying, I, in verse 18, I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. So instead of taking the firstborn of the children of Israel, the Lord has decided to take the Levites. And it says in the 19th verse, and I have taken the Levites as a gift to Aaron. Okay, Aaron is a picture of Christ. And we see, let me see here, in Exodus, I believe it was Exodus 28, if I've still got that handy. We see that, here it is. It speaks of um, 
right here in verse 1, Exodus 28, verse 1, And take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. All right, so here we see Aaron being set up in the priest's office. And it goes on to, to talk about how... Um, Thou shalt make holy garments, and it gives a description of everything. But here we have a reference to First um, Peter two nine and Revelations one six. Now, let me see here. Give me just a moment. I'm working on it. All right. All right. Here we go. And 1 Peter 2, 9, the scripture says, now this gives us a, a picture of what we are, okay, to the Lord. It says right here, it's a subtitle in my, in my KJV, the believer's life in view of his sevenfold position and of the vicarious suffering of Christ. So this gives us a picture of um, what we are. Okay, it, in this verse 9, it says, And ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him. Now, this right here is very important. Okay, praises of him. We're going to look at praising and, and giving thanks and things of that nature. Um, it's very important to the Lord. Um, let's see. The praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So here we clearly see that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Okay, just as the Levites were royal priesthood, they were chosen by God um, to execute his service, just as we are a chosen generation. We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Um. God has set us apart from the rest, okay? Those of us that believe in Christ, we are set apart. We are to be separate from this world. Um, I'm trying to think. There was a scripture that had that in it. Uh, all right, I'm going to jump over here to, we're still in Second Peter 2, but verse 5 it says, Ye also, as living stones... It says, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay, we have a reference right here where it says, are built up. And at that reference says, are building, excuse me, are being built up right there where I've got that highlighted so we as lively stones because we're part of the kingdom and um, we are being built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices okay spiritual sacrifices what you got to understand um, let's see the simplest way the Lord showed me this okay because he knows complicated <laughs> don't work for me it's got to be simple okay is how that sacrifices of animals um, that is a dead sacrifice okay it's not just about the animal being physically dead but it's a dead sacrifice in the sense that unlike Christ who who was a living sacrifice um 
how he, how do I explain this? How just him offering himself up one time covered all our sins, okay? He only had to be offered up in sacrifice one time. Um, and and the the animal sacrifices, they they are dead sacrifices. They they accomplish no perfection, no purification. Um, they were a to put it in simple terms, a um a a ritual or a an action, a a motion that they went through, because. One thing the Lord is showing me is that it wasn't about him wanting dead animals and and the flesh and the blood of dead animals. It was about it was about praise. It was about thanksgiving. It was about worship. Uh, it was about um, the people sacrificing of themselves. Spiritual sacrifice, okay? Spiritual sacrifice. And the thing that he's made clear to me is that in the scriptures, and I think it's in um, Romans 12, 1. Yeah, I got it pulled up here. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice is us dying to self, okay, and and offering ourself up to the Lord as a spiritual sacrifice. Um, it's about us giving, giving Him our heart, our mind and our soul, us loving Him with our all our heart, mind, and soul. Um, the living sacrifice, you know, in the scriptures we came from back in the Old Testament, it was talking about the Levites being um, offered up, and. They were a living sacrifice. They were a picture of a living sacrifice, just as we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Because the Lord, He wants us to sacrifice ourselves to Him. Not as in what we know sacrifices to be of, of death and the shedding of blood, but He wants us to be a living sacrifice where. We, and I'll show you a good example. Let me see if I can find that. I think it was in, let me see if I can find it again. Bear with me, bear with me. Um, I think it's in Psalms. Hold on, y'all. That's Jeremiah. Oh, here we go, here we go. Right here in the book of Psalms, I believe this is where I wanted to be. Here it says, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Now this is David talking about the Lord. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offering hast thou not required. So, you know, David is even recognizing here that it wasn't about the sacrifice and the offering um that they did in those days and it wasn't about the burnt offerings that wasn't what the Lord desired and it goes on to say then said I now now that was something the Lord instructed them in but it wasn't it wasn't what the Lord was seeking from them they never got it see he was wanting them of their self to give freely from of their self to him but the, but they never got it okay it says, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. He's talking about the Lord here. It goes on to say, then saith I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will. See, this is what he's talking about. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. 
I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid the righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not con- concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. See, what the, what he's saying here is it's not... It never was about the sacrifices and the offerings and the burnt offerings. It was about giving of yourself to the Lord willfully and lovingly and cheerfully and joyfully. I declare to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness. It's about doing the things of the Lord, sacrificing to yourself and doing the things of the Lord. And here I've gone 16 minutes. Bye.